Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian Arbuck, and today I will be joined by Evan Haldeman, who will be sharing his experiences with the iPhone 8 Plus. That's me. <laughs> Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO29. All right, Evan, so brand new iPhone 8 was announced at the Apple, like, September event, right? Um, How soon after that did you get this thing? The 26th of September, I want to say. Okay. So a couple weeks after. Okay, yeah, and then that means that you've had this thing for probably about two weeks now, right? about two or three weeks. Yep, nice, nice. That's, I think that's pretty good timing, because like, I didn't give uh, Brian very much time to get to know his Apple Watch before I made him <laughs> review it two weeks yeah. ago. But yeah, this is, this is pretty good. So, so you're coming off of uh, an iPhone 7, right? Yep, iPhone 7 Plus. There we go. Um, so this thing should probably feel pretty familiar to you, like it physically. It feels practically the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can feel a small weight difference, and that's about it. Oh, interesting. Is um, it he- heavier or, or lighter? A little bit heavier. Okay. Um, and if you don't have a case on it, then obviously the glass back is... Right. It's more... It's, it's grippier, but you can also break it. Mm-hmm. So, because the aluminum body got... It got a little slippery on the seven. Right, right. So, so it's definitely so it's grippier when you have it in your fingers, right? Mm-hmm. But like, is the glass kind of slipperier when you put it like on a table surface kind of thing? I'd say it's about the same, except okay. I haven't tried that because I'd rather not scratch the back as well. Right, right, right. I can now scratch both sides of my phone um, instead of just one. So, so given that they're so similar, were you able to use you? Are you able to use like the same case for it? I was, except there's troubles getting it on. It is, I think, like a millimeter or two thicker. Mm. So trying to get it on the corners took a little bit of uh, extra encouragement to get on. Right. And I think you said that, like, the the camera bump was, like, moved over slightly or something? Yeah, it's, um, the camera is slightly lower, and so the case kind of rubs on the the casing around the outside of the camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we, so the one that you've got here is this an iPhone seven case? It is an iPhone seven case. Okay, interesting, interesting. But yeah, it seems to work out just just fine. Yeah, it doesn't cover any of the mm-hmm. camera or anything. It's basically nice. the same shape. Cool, cool, cool. So I guess you can if you if you're coming from an iPhone seven, you could uh, save a little bit of money that way. Mm-hmm. In terms of the regular pricing for the phone, uh, they start at eight hundred dollars, and I believe that sixty four gigabytes is the smallest storage option that you've I got. I think right? so. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I have it written down here. So, yeah, it starts at 64 gigabytes, and then you can bump it all the way up to 256. 256, yep. yep. And there's nothing in between, right? I think those are the only two options you have. I think so. Yeah. If anything, it'd be a 128, but right. I don't think that's... But I, Yeah, I didn't see that on the list. So that's, um, yeah, that's that's kind of odd, but, like, that's fine, I think. I mean... I feel like if you're if you're not looking for that much storage, if you're not trying to be a photographer with your phone right. or a videographer, then the 64 gigabyte works perfectly fine. I mm-hmm. think I've used like 20, and mm. that's all just music. Right, right. But if you if you really um, if you're really into it, I mean, I guess 256 would definitely do you pretty well. My PC has a 256 gig SSD in it. Right. So it yeah it's. Uh, if you can get away with that on a desktop computer, you're probably yeah, going to be fine on your phone. For sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is going to be the first year that I'll have a 64 gigabyte phone, and I'm looking forward to like being able to install my games on the same device as <laughs> yeah. I have like all my music. For sure. Because that's the choice that I had to make in the past. So let's talk about the other specs as well. It's got the brand new A11 Bionic chip, mm-hmm. um, which I, th- I think is because like, the A11 was the one that they came out with for the iPhone 7, right? And then Bionic yeah. is just kind of like it, that. That tells me that it's just kind of like an incremental little upgrade, right, mm-hmm. over the iPhone Seven. Three gigs of RAM. Do you happen to remember how much the Seven had? No. Okay. Yeah. So I'm not sure if this is an upgrade from the Seven or not. <laughs> Should have a web page open to just look all this stuff. Up. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah, like we said, 64 gigabytes or 256 gigabytes of storage. Mm-hmm. Would you like to talk about the camera a little bit, since we've talked oh. a little bit about that? The camera, it's fairly the, it's it's mostly the same, especially on the plus. There's again the double, mm-hmm. um, double lenses for like the 3D. I will say that it, um, I don't know if it's just the new screen, 
or not the new screen, but like the brighter screen that makes camera or it makes the pictures look a little more um, vivid and sharp. But mm. also, the video can now shoot at 4K at 60 FPS. That's awesome. And I think on the iPhone 7, it was 4K at 30 FPS was the max. Right. Which is pretty sweet. Um, I like it. And then you can shoot 1080p at 240 FPS, mm-hmm. which is to get some a, crazy slow mo. Yeah, which is shots. again really cool. Other than that, I mean, the new portrait mode with the lighting effects. Yeah, those lighting effects. If, <laughs> if you've seen them, th- I'm sorry for you. They're kind of, they're weird. I mean, yeah. some of them are okay, but some of them make our host look a little creepy with yeah. the black background. And uh, and I also noticed in that picture that you took of me that, like, it didn't do a super great job of cropping me yeah. out because it was trying to give a black background. Yeah, it left a little bit of the background in. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if that's just something that happened just because or if if we would have let it, you know, like, initialize or read the background a little bit longer than if it right. would have uh, figured that out. But for me, the weirdest thing about this new portrait mode is, like, seeing the lighting effect change in real time on mm-hmm. the screen is really like unsettling for me. Yeah. Um, cause that's not what happens in real life, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> yeah. You t- yeah. It's kind of, it's interesting. I'll say yeah. that at the least. Yeah. So how, how freaking big are those 4k at 60 frames per second <laughs> video files? I think a minute of video is pushing on a gigabyte oh, geez. of space. Yeah. So they do they do get large, but then again, if you if you need that much space, you have the two fifty six gigabyte option. Right, right, right. Most of my videos are like ten second shots of my brothers doing something stupid, mm. so I don't really have that problem. And especially yeah. if you offload onto something like Google Drive. Yeah, yeah. Although, like, if you're out and about for a day of like shooting kind yeah. of thing, you know, and you haven't had a chance to. Mm-hmm transfer the files over you know i can imagine filling it up it could fill up pretty quickly yeah i can also imagine if you're out and about for a long day that you might want to know about the battery life how good is the battery life on this thing it's actually a little bit improved from the Mm seven i haven't had as many problems going throughout the school day and using it um here and there uh it used to get down to about 30 percent after a six hour day at school and now it if I use it the same amount, it gets to around 60. So oh, nice. it's considerably better as long as I especially use low power mode all the time. Oh, okay. Just because it has, has like the auto brightness and it uh, it doesn't let apps use as much as they can. Um, it keeps them to as much as they need, which is nice. It's, it's kind of helpful. Mm-hmm. I definitely recommend using it, especially if you don't. Like, if you're not around a charger all day, like, say, if you're out in the woods taking pictures. Sure. It's definitely it's definitely helpful. But, yeah, from the iPhone 7, it's definitely improved. Cool. And, of course, I, I, I imagine that, like, being an iPhone probably got awesome standby time because that's what one of the things that Apple's known for is, you know, if you just, like, leave the phone sitting there, mm-hmm. it, it won't take any battery life at all. Yeah, it's uh, – I think I left it on – for about a day, I've tried a couple of these things. Just to, especially the first day that I had both the seven and the eight at, uh, mm. at my house, tried a couple of things, left it on and for an hour or two, and just to see where the and the the eight definitely worked better. Not by too much more, but it was noticeable. Right. So the battery is a little bit better. Okay. But Good. not Good. not too much. Not enough to not enough to make the price point a hundred dollars higher. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then of course. Once you uh, run down the battery a little bit and you want to charge it, we can use lightning tape cable, as always. Mm -hmm. There is fast charging available, but not with the brick that comes in the box. Apparently, you have to buy a different brick. Personally, if you have an iPad already, like the ones that they give us to school, the 12-watt, I use that, and it works pretty darn well. Awesome. Yeah. Um, But then we have a new option this year, which is why they gave us uh, glass backs instead of aluminum backs. Yep. So we've got Qi wireless charging available, right? Yes. Have you had have you encountered any wireless charging stations yet? I have actually. I tried one out at an Apple store oh, when okay. I first got it. And I think of it was Of course they have those there. <laughs> yeah. I think it was the Belkin model okay. that they have on that they show on their website, I believe. Mm-hmm. It works eh. It's it's not fast it's not like the Samsung fast charging or anything. But it definitely, it works. 
Uh, I personally would only really use it for like my desktop settings, like on top of my desk, right? Where I'm gonna be there for a while, and every once in a while, I want to pick up my phone and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, like in between a game or something, look at a t- look at Twitter or something. I couldn't really imagine bringing it like around with me if I'm going to the airport or something. Right? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. It's got to be like a stationary kind mm-hmm. of like, state. Yeah. Like something I'd leave at home. Yeah. Instead of uh, carrying around with me. So the reason that I was super excited to see that Apple was adopting Qi wireless charging was because when I realized last year that Apple was never going to like bring USB Type C to the iPhones, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, well, okay, wireless charging is the only way that we could possibly have like one standard charger yeah. that can work with multiple different platforms, mm-hmm. including the iPhone. And then once. Of course, once I had this epiphany that, like, oh, yay, now we can all just wireless charge because Android's has wireless charging for, like, years. Yeah. And, I, and I looked at, like, my Nexus and I realized that it actually didn't have wireless charging because, like, a bunch like a bunch of these companies introduced wireless charging, like, three or four years ago. Mm-hmm. And then they realized that nobody was using it. Nobody was buying their phones for the wireless charging. And so yeah. they stopped putting it in there. Mm-hmm. And so now we're going to have to, like, we're going to have to wait for them to go back yeah. to having wireless charging available. For sure. But it would be like I it would be super sweet to have just like in my living room, you know, a couple of wireless charging pads like next to the couches. Yeah. So that everybody in the house, whether just, they're using an iPhone or an Android, yes. can just like set it down. Yeah. Yeah. I know um I've seen a c I've I've looked up a couple models that charge both at the same time. Mm-hmm. And I know I think on Apple, if you have two iPhones on the same charging dock Mm -hmm. um if you're using like an apple certified one it'll show you which ones are on the charging dock right yeah yeah um but i i wonder if it would do the same thing with uh iphone and a samsung i have no idea it'll be interesting to see like once because i think Mm -hmm. that 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 extra wide pad isn't out yet yeah i believe yeah so it'll be interesting to see people playing around with it experimenting Mm -hmm. because i mean just like you know when the airpods came out last year they didn't talk about whether or not it was going to be compatible with anything other than apple devices and Mm -hmm. i was really worried but it it turns out it does work as a regular bluetooth so hopefully the the other apple the certified wireless pad will actually yeah yeah, play nicely that'd be pretty cool um so you mentioned uh you mentioned the screen uh is a little bit different than the iphone 7 yeah i think one of the one of the things that i've noticed is the true tone Mm -hmm. that they have in there yeah there's a slider right here. So True Tone, it pretty much it it uses the camera to sense like light in the room mm-hmm. to try to give you the truest colors for like the room around you. Right. So like so kind of adjusting like the temperature of the colors yeah, accordingly. Yeah. Exactly. And so I think that's one thing you don't really notice it because you get used to it. You get used to it changing. Right. Versus if you turn True Tone off and like you have all night shifts off, then it just stays the same. Like sort of like white light mm-hmm. screen but the true tone definitely changes to warmer colors especially with the setting around you so i think that that helps a little bit i i don't really notice it anymore because it's just kind of like i'm getting used to it now but yeah it'll be interesting to see if people like once this is a, a feature that more and more people have a, available to them you know uh, if if we're gonna have like big debates similar to like the do you keep auto brightness on or off you know yeah. like and some people are like super into auto brightness some mm-hmm. people hate it you know I love auto brightness so it saves it's, my battery it's probably gonna be the same kind of thing uh you know the same, t- same yeah. debate going on <laughs> for sure because I you know that it I've seen like phones that have auto brightness where they like really aggressively change yeah. and they're like okay I'm just holding you here. The light is still the same. Why are you like flickering yeah. almost? Like, do, have you noticed that with True Tone, or is it is it fairly mellow? I think it's it's really mellow. I think it blends really well with the room around you. The only reason, or the only time you ever really notice it, is when like say you walk from being inside in like a room where the lights turned off to going out on your porch, and you can kind of see it change. Mm-hmm. But if you have your phone in your hand and you're walking through the house and downstairs it's the lights are off and upstairs lights are off but you you still have your phone out in your hand it just kind of changes on its own so when you right. unlock it it's already it's already adjusted to the room around you oh okay yeah yeah so Sweet. you don't really notice it too much unless you're going from two very extreme different situations so you know outside in the sun and snow versus inside and lights turned off mm-hmm. you, you don't, don't really you know it would be it interesting is if they 
because you know how they like offer a slider for the for the brightness, right? Yeah. It would be interesting if they offered a slider as well for the temperature. That, you know, since that is a feature that you know the the phone yeah. can automatically adjust the temperature. Uh, like, it would be interesting if they surfaced that as a thing that uh, that the user could slide around. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, oh. Yeah. So well, you, the, okay. So that's the night shift slider. Yep. Yeah. So, um, and I know it has this little thing under uh, that the the what's it, the, the temperature middles. of the color will change like some on screen things. Mm-hmm. I don't really see that too much. Right. It's kind of you don't really. It's not something you really notice too often. Yeah. Unless you're big into video editing and you you look right. for things like that. I have been editing photos before, and I like forgot to turn off the uh, the orange tints on yeah. my monitor, and I'm like, oh wait, these are all turning out really weird. <laughs> Now, other than that, I think the display is pretty darn similar to the iPhone sevens, right? It's still the same yep. five and a half inch screen on the on the plus model. Yep. On in the same size body and everything, so we've got the same bezels and everything. Mm-hmm. This one still has an LCD because I'm pretty sure the iPhone ten is the one that has the OLED. Yes, yeah. it is. Yep. Which in in a way, it's it's kind of I when I was looking at. The, the announcements that they made, I was like, okay, so we've got the iPhone 10 that's like, you know, a couple hundred dollars more than the iPhone 8. Yeah. And I was trying to identify, like, what is it about the iPhone 10 that warrants, like, mm-hmm. an, the extra price? The and extra it's, it's really just all about the, the screen, mm-hmm. you know? So if you're really into that screen, yeah. you'll spend the extra money. But otherwise, like, the iPhone 8 is just fine. Pretty um, much, yeah. I think a lot of it is. Some people wanting to get those bells, bezels away. Yeah. The people yeah, they yeah. really not enjoying them. I mean, they were cool when everyone had bezels, and now right. almost no one does. And Well, yeah, and, and I feel like the, the front face of the iPhones has stayed fairly consistent ever since like, yeah. the iPhone, the first iPhone. Yeah, um, the, the look has definitely stayed the same. Mm-hmm. I've seen pictures, or I've seen drawings that I made in, like, sixth grade of my iPhone 3G. and yeah. And I had, I could easily change the label on it and say iPhone 8 and just mm-hmm. recolor it and it'd be the same thing. And I admit I'm definitely a little bit of a hypocrite here because, you know, I've been I've been bashing Apple for quite a while for having these gigantic, you know, yeah. chin and forehead and everything. And uh and then App or and or Google had their announcements uh a couple last week and I had the choice of either getting the Pixel 2 with the same like you yeah. know big chin and and forehead as the Nexus 5X mm-hmm. or I could get the the XL version yeah. which has a more of an edge to edge screen not quite fully edge to edge you know yeah. but like it's Pretty getting there close. and what did I choose I chose the smaller one that has the giant bezel still <laughs> so doesn't the XL isn't that the one that's uh it's larger and has the three different colors like the two colors on the back and then the weird like orange colored power button Yes, yeah, the, yeah. One, yeah. The white and black one has like a red power button. Yeah, yeah. that seems. Uh, I kind of like that little accent though. It's, it seems nice. Yeah, I think it could have been a closer color to the to the front or to the back tones, but maybe. I feel like the whole point of it was just like this is yeah, different. Yeah, like right? this is cool, but. Yeah. And actually, what it reminded me of was the way that the Apple Watch Series Three with LTE oh, yeah, with the, has uh, the red mm-hmm. on the crown. Yeah. Yeah. So. Actually, speaking of uh, colors, what colors are the iPhone 8 available in? The iPhone 8 Plus is available in, I believe, silver, like a grayish color. Probably and space gray. Probably space gray. Um, no more matte black. Okay. No more no more of the shiny black. Jet, jet black. No more yeah. jet black, I believe. I almost and... called it piano black, but that's, <laughs> that's not it. Um, and then the third color is gold. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure of a rose gold. This looks kind of rose gold it to does. me. Though, it does. It looks very. It it looks like it has sort of a pink tinge to it. Yeah. Um, especially on the glass. But they're mar- they're marketing it as just regular gold. They're marketing it as gold. Yes. Okay. okay. I've never really seen the iPhone iPhone gold as true gold. Right. It's always kind of had more of a red tint to it, but the rose gold was obviously um, it was a little more, you know, pushed out that it was reddish Mm -hmm. so yeah 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 speaking of actually space gray mkbhd brought up recently that like space gray is a color that apple invented you know Mm -hmm. they made it up so it can be whatever tint they want yeah and they do this weird thing where like every 
every device that they make that comes in space gray is a little bit, is a little bit different. It's a little bit yeah. different. Yeah. Than the so last. if you get the space gray like iPhone and you get the iPhone, uh, the space gray MacBook Pro, like they're not going to look the same, which is super weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was my biggest concern for the for the iPhone eight was that the the gold looks a little redder. And I was planning, I was thinking about getting an Apple Watch in mm-hmm. gold. Mm. And I, obviously, I wanted them to match. I didn't want right. to have a gray and a gold, but I'm worried that it won't match now anyways. You know what you can always do is you can just, like, get a case for your phone and, like, a, a strap for your for your watch Yeah. Uh, that, you know, kind of match mm-hmm. colors. I've seen a lot of people do that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I'll get a Nexus case and <laughs> oh, color yeah, with, in with a... Oh, with our logo? Color in a band with it. Heck Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, um, what kind of buttons we got on this thing? Uh, we have the um, same buttons as before, pretty much. Practically, yeah. Okay. Um, the home button is still the just the not the actual button, but the pad that mm-hmm. just vibrates like a the, little. The force touch thingy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, so nothing has really changed. It's all the same. No headphone jack. Mm-hmm. How about the uh, speakers then? Because I know that last year I think was the first time that they allowed like the the speaker that's usually just used for phone calls to yeah. be used for media playback. So, so they had sort of a stereo speaker going last year. Um and on my iPhone 7, both the bottom speaker played music as well, mm-hmm. as well as the one that you use for phone calls. On this one it's the same setup, but I I don't know if it's maybe just my device, but I get music out of the phone call speaker and only one of the bottom speakers Mm -hmm. um the other one seems to not take part in that it's weird and i don't know if that's something that they planned whether that speaker was going to be dedicated for something else or if it's just i mean chances are it's the microphone yeah yeah but i don't know why they'd need that many holes for a microphone i don't know i yeah yeah i've seen Um, that kind of thing happen before though yeah so maybe they planned it maybe they didn't now since the the speakers, I think, are built differently. If you're holding your phone in front of you and, like, watching a video kind of thing, do you notice, like, a difference in the sound between the left and the right? Or do they do a pretty good job of, like, balancing it out? I th- I notice more volume okay. coming from the bottom speakers. Hmm. This one, it's not as powerful of a speaker. Okay. But they do, they did their best job balancing it. It's not that bad. Has it so if you're playing something that has like different left and right channels, does it does it split it into the two speakers or does it like mix it down into mono? I've had some music like um A Well Nation Sale mm-hmm. plays a higher octave on one ear and then a lower octave on another side. Huh. Huh. Um That's goofy. Yeah. I've noticed oh I mean, it sounds like they tried to split it up, but didn't do too well of a right. job. I mean, obviously, it works with the headphones. It plays in the left and right ear, but but the speakers, you don't. It's not really. It's just kind of coming out at the same time. Right, right. All right, radios. Have you noticed, like, if it gets a better signal or not than, than your iPhone 7? I'd say I've experienced lower signals okay. more. I still get about the same signal in most places, like, especially going... I mean, I do get a little bit better going, um, going out more south like towards camp a little bit okay towards filippo and going that way i do get a little bit better signal but then uh every once in a while at school it'll drop out in places where normally i'd be fine with my seven and you're on sprint right yes okay and we don't they don't have the biggest network ever but yeah it works for where i go i go to school and i go to work and then i go home Mm -hmm. so i get it's i haven't noticed too much with the device the antennas are not shown on the back anymore though oh right because they don't need to have the band that goes all the way across yeah Yeah. um and so the seven had them up on like the top and under the bottom Mm -hmm. and this one just i think it's either hidden under the glass or it just stops here right Uh, yeah i wonder if these because because on the very side edges of the phone they still have this kind of like band and i wonder if that's just aesthetic now Mm -hmm. instead of actually functional yeah Let's see, software, we probably don't need to talk about this a whole lot because I think we'll do a full iOS 11, iOS 11 yeah. uh, review later. But, like, is is there anything drastic that is added here that goes along with the new phone? I don't think that there's much added. I think one of the biggest things um, is that they're starting to get more, they're starting to use 3D Touch more. Mm. They're starting to make more things, like, accessible with it. 
Um, and app developers are also doing the same thing. Right. Like the home screen apps are more things that you can open up, um, like different conversations. Get, or, getting those shortcuts and yeah, stuff. Yeah. So they're coming out with more shortcuts uh, with that 3D touch, which I think is kind of nice. And then also the the task bar um, mm, drastically yeah. changed, but now they also the, there's also 3D touch included in this. Yeah, so I, this is so, called the control center technique. Control right? center, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and so there's different things that you can you can get Bluetooth and airplane mode all within just the Wi-Fi one. Mm-hmm. Is this? Do I remember correctly that you can move stuff around on here? Can you customize? Where I the believe layout? so. If you go into settings, I think you can. I mean, it would be really nice if you could just like long press on them and move them around. Yeah, you for know? sure. That would make sense. Found it. It was in. It was under the control center. Oh yeah. Menu. Yeah. Um, Imagine that. So it has a couple different things um, added. Oh yeah. So let's see. It looks like a lot of these are. Yep. So are, a oh. lot of these, the first ones, just like the basic ones, are the ones that they had on in the old iOS. Mm-hmm. For, the, the toggles for turning the flashlight on and off. Yeah, and flashlight and the, the shortcuts lower, for camera and low stuff. Low power mode. Uh, actually, I think low power mode is added on this one. I don't oh. believe. Okay. Um, I know I personally put that one on. I don't think low power mode was on iOS 10 in the control center. Mm-hmm. You had to like go all the way into the you settings. Had, and, yeah, I think you had yeah. to go into settings to um, do it. I might be wrong, but also the screen recording thing is really cool. Yep. But now apps are figuring out that screen recording is a thing. Like, I know people were worried that Snapchat would have a problem with it. Right. Um, if it didn't send out, if it didn't send that, like, you know, this person has saved your picture. Right. If it didn't send that, then they'd start to have problems. I um, think I, I just, Facebook is such folly because, like, somebody could easily just be using the Android app mm-hmm. in an emulator on, like, a Windows machine, and they could be recording that whole thing. Yep. And, you, like, there's nothing you can do. There's no mm-hmm. way for you to know. Um, so, kids, you know, if you uh, if you send a picture to somebody, if you send a video to somebody, like, it's possible for it to be yeah. recorded. It's definitely... At the very least, you can just point a camera at the screen and, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> record the recording. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but I know Snapchat changed that. They changed that. Now it recognizes when screen recording is happening. Yeah. And they send that notification through, which I thought was smart on their part. Mm-hmm. For sure. I just I still find it weird that like they're even able to detect that, you know, because like yeah. coming as a heavy Windows user, mm-hmm. right? The 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 programs that I have on the computer have no way of knowing when I'm taking screenshots and stuff, of course, right? You know? Yeah. That's only Windows business. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. All right. Any uh final thoughts on the iPhone eight? I guess it's kind of worth talking about like where it falls in kind of like the hierarchy these days, right? Because like um, it used to be that the brand new iPhone, especially like the iPhone Plus size, yeah. you know, was like that's the highest that you go, right? Yeah. Um, but now we've got like the iPhone 10 kind of above that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's an interesting it's an interesting spot. And of course, like all of the older phones still are being like sold. They're just kind of you know bumped down the price yeah. tier, right? Mm-hmm. So so do you think that this fits well where it's at in the price tier at like the eight hundred dollars? In between the the thousand uh, dollar iPhone ten and you know last year's iPhone seven and everything, I think that it's definitely a better deal than the iPhone ten. I don't think that you're gaining much from getting a bigger screen and facial recognition. Right. I don't know if it's gaining much over the old iPhone seven plus. Right. Um, a lot of these things seem like just kind of an incremental yeah look spec just bump. little little rebrands you know here and there. But pretty much just the same phone in a in the same case, and mm-hmm. I think a lot of it that they're trying to do is trying to make the the software less compatible with the old phones. Because hmm. I know I've some people are just having problems updating now. Yeah, I'd say it's it's if you currently have a seven, it's not that much worth upgrading to the eight. Right. Um, if you have something like lower than a six, the eight is a viable option mm-hmm. but again the seven is it's practically the same phone without a glass back right and so if you're not big into wireless charging or the, right, s- right. the small things on the iphone 8 i think you'd be better off going with the seven i'm kind of interested to see if like people are going to look at the lineup and go well here's the latest one that still has 
a headphone jack, right? Mm-hmm. Are we going to see people still buying the 6S just for the headphone jack? Yeah. Or, you know, or are people going to be willing to switch over? I don't know. Well, I know um, they've started sending out the dongles with the headphones now, mm-hmm. the lightning port to 3.5 millimeter. Oh, yeah. But also people don't really want to... They don't really want that extra like little cord there to hang around. Right, right. Which which I totally understand. I'm personally fine with the lightning port headphones just for everyday use and then I have a pair of Bluetooth headphones that I had before I got the mm-hmm. the seven. And it's probably it's still not really a good idea to get like the headphones that only have the lightning port on the end. Yeah. Because then you're you're completely taking away the option of like mm-hmm. plugging it into any other kind yeah, of device. Taking it from your phone and throwing it on your computer or something. E- exactly, yeah. Mm-hmm. Funny story about lightning to headphone jack adapters. I actually use one with the school iPad here because the the case is so thick on yeah, the, on the iPad can't fit the... that I can't fit my headphones into the yeah. headphone jack. <laughs> yeah. 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 Other than I think the headphones I think it's not that big of a deal, especially if you're, especially if you like Bluetooth headphones. Mm-hmm. I especially like Bluetooth headphones. I have a Bluetooth headset for my games and everything. Right. Um, I just like to be able to be dis like detached from my phone, mm-hmm. listening to music, say like doing yard work or something. But it's not too big of a deal. Right. Someday, someday I will look back on today and go, ha. You used to get like caught on door handles as you were walking by because yeah. of the cord from your headphones. Mm-hmm. What, why did you ever live like that? Yeah, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> yeah, you heard about uh, Apple's talking about making a new dongle for uh, charging and and music at the same time. Mm, yeah, but I know I, there are lots of like third party. Yeah, options there's already that, a couple third kind of, party ones. They're kind of like iffy. Yeah, you know? I think that goes. Like some of the like uncertified chargers that you'll get that error message to like this isn't certified right, with Apple right. and they'll stop working. Kind of the same thing on the USB Type C side. Mm-hmm. I've I've seen a few that are like you know seven or ten bucks or whatever. Yeah, and they are averaging like three out of five stars on Amazon. Yeah, and then I see like Google is selling their own first party uh you know splitter for forty five dollars and I'm like yeah. oh gosh mm-hmm. uh, yeah. But I think the the dongle that they're making, I th- one of the concept ideas was not a um, lightning port in a 3.5 millimeter, but rather two lightning ports, mm. one for charging and one for lightning port <laughs> headphones, <laughs> so that you could only... Um, oh, what a you, world we live in. You could only use the uh, either the Apple headphones or some other you know third-party lightning port headphones. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm not sure if that's like a final design... Uh, obviously, I just heard, it was just a concept. Right. Uh, the the adapters that they give the teachers for plugging in the iPads to like a projector, right? Mm-hmm. So lightning to VGA yeah. also has another lightning in, so that you can charge the iPad at, at the same, same time. time. Yeah, and that was a nice touch. Um, yeah. So those kinds of things definitely exist already. Yeah, for sure. So thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion, everybody. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck. You can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck or uh, on my website, ianrbuck.com, to see links to other stuff that I make. How about you, Evan? Where can people find you on the internet? Um, they can find my Steam, at Jagermonkey. <laughs> uh, my Twitter, I forgot my name, but it's something to do with Evan Haldeman. Okay. You can find me commenting on Ian's Facebook posts. That's very true. As well, yeah. mostly with GIFs. And I'll probably I'll probably find, like, grab the links to your Steam and your Twitter and put yep. them in the show notes mm-hmm. as well. And uh, we are the Nexus, so if you would like to give us uh, feedback on this episode specifically, if you would like to, like, suggest future episodes, stuff for us to review, please get in touch with us. You can find us on Twitter at the Nexus TV. Uh, or you can send us an email at thenexustv at gmail.com. Have a good one, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>